I say thanks for the things you have done for me. Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to Thee, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, for the things He has done with his blood he has saved me with his power he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has
Good afternoon, Saints. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you, all of you, each and every beloved one of you, to this worship service. It is an honor for us to gather and to be with our presiding bishop, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry. It is a delight to welcome you into your diocese here and as a representative leader of the Anglican Communion in this place. It is a blessing. I'm speechless about how to even say anything more <laughs> because you are such a beautiful sight. But know that you are welcome and I hope that you will lean in and participate as generously as you are able. 
So let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people 
by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The candidates will now be presented. I present these persons for confirmation, and I also present these persons to be received into this communion. We present these persons for confirmation. We present these persons to be received into this communion. I present this person for confirmation. We present these persons to be received into this communion. We present this person for confirmation, and we present this person who desires to reaffirm his baptismal vows. Will all the candidates please stand? Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Now will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. You may be seated. Has he been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe his manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that he has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe him to be qualified for this order. Jennifer, Bishop in the Church of God, on behalf of the clergy and people of the Diocese of Indianapolis, we present to you has he been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe his manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that he has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe him to be qualified for this order. Jason, Joel. Will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so. And I solemnly declare that I do believe the holy scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. Will you so sign?
Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Jason and Joel for ordination to the sacred priesthood. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Jason and Joel be ordained priests? It is. Will you uphold them in this ministry? We will. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, we pray to you, Lord Christ, for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of your church and their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for your truth, and may thirst after righteousness, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jason and Joel, chosen priests in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, build up your church, and glorify your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose baptisms are sealed today with the Holy Spirit, that their hearts may be opened to your grace and truth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That you would fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit, keep them in the communion of your holy church, and teach them to love others as you have loved them, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, 
that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord, our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
una lectura de la carta de Pablo a los romanos. Todos los que son guiados por el Espíritu de Dios son hijos de Dios, pues ustedes no han recibido un espíritu de esclavitud que los lleve otra vez a tener miedo, sino el espíritu que los hace hijos de Dios. Por este espíritu nos dirigimos a Dios, diciendo, Abba, Padre. Y este mismo espíritu se une a nuestro espíritu para dar testimonio de que ya somos hijos de Dios. Y puesto que somos sus hijos, también tendremos parte de la herencia que Dios nos ha prometido, la cual compartiremos con Cristo. Puesto que sufrimos con Él para estar también con Él en su gloria. Sabemos que hasta ahora la creación entera se queja y sufre, como una mujer con dolores de parto. Y no solo ella sufre, sino también nosotros, que ya tenemos el Espíritu como anticipo de lo que vamos a recibir. Sufrimos profundamente esperando el momento de ser adoptados como hijos de Dios, con lo cual serán liberados nuestros cuerpos. Con esa esperanza hemos sido salvados, solo que esperar lo que ya se está viendo no es esperanza. Pues, ¿quién espera lo que ya está viendo? Pero si lo que esperamos es algo que todavía no vemos, tenemos que esperarlo sufriendo con firmeza. De igual manera, el Espíritu nos ayuda en nuestra debilidad, porque no sabemos orar como es debido. Pero el Espíritu mismo rega a Dios por nosotros, con gemidos que no pueden expresarse con palabras. Y Dios, que examina los corazones, sabe qué es lo que el Espíritu quiere decir, porque el Espíritu rega conforme a la voluntad de Dios por los del pueblo santo. Escuche lo que el Espíritu le está diciendo al pueblo de Dios.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. El Santo Evangelio de Nuestro Señor Jesucristo, según San Juan. Glory to you, On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet, there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. El último día de la fiesta era el más importante. Aquel día Jesús, puesto de pie, dio con un voz fuerte. Si alguien tiene sed, venga a mí. Y el que cree en mí, que beba. Como dice la escritura, del interior de aquel correrán con Dios de agua viva. Con esto, Jesús quería decir que los que creen en él recibieran el espíritu. Y es que el Espíritu todavía no estaba, porque Jesús aún no había sido glorificado. El Evangelio del Señor. And now in the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. <laughs> it is, it is a, a, a profound joy for me to be able to be with you on this Pentecost weekend, which is an appropriate time to have a Love is the Way diocesan festival. We just sang about that sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. It is, it is a blessing to be with you, to celebrate and affirm with you the, the work that God is doing through you. And I have to tell you, I told the young people who are being confirmed, I don't know where, I guess they're scattered about, uh, but I told them that I've been ordained over 40 years and I'd never before, I haven't been a bishop 40 years, wait a minute, let me clear that up. Uh, <laughs> but, but I've never been a bishop some 20 something years and I never before have been at a service of holy confirmation and ordination to the sacred priesthood all at the same time. <laughs> it is a whole, this is a Holy Spirit or better yet to go back to the King James, this is a Holy Ghost party. <laughs> Holy Ghost Party. <laughs> and I just thank you for all that you are doing um, in this diocese. I thank your, your planning committee, your, your staff, and, and above all, she won't say it for herself, but your bishop. You got one of the best. She's awesome. I used to run with her. Many years and many pounds ago on my behalf. <laughs> it is a blessing, Bishop Jennifer, and to the good people of this remarkable diocese. Thank you for letting me share a little bit with you. There, there is an old spiritual you know I suspect fairly well, it, sung by African slaves who, for all practical purposes, had very little hope in this world and very little expectation that the world, the way it was, would be changed. 
And I suspect sometimes we feel like that too. How many shootings? How many babies must die? How many people? Just children of God. Why must we be so divided? God loves Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. Jesus loves little children, and he loves the little politicians, too. <laughs> and there's a part of us that sometimes wants to, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic, sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and yet it's still lingering around. And we know that the racial reckoning that happened when we saw George Floyd and Breonna Taylor killed before our eyes is still with us. Indian burial schools where young Indian babies, children were buried, being dug up not just in Canada anymore, but south of the Canadian border here. And we know the Asian Americans are sometimes afraid to go out on their streets. We know that LGBTQ folk sometimes afraid to be who they are. And sometimes you add it all together, and then the poor folk of Ukraine, all they want to do is be free. And somehow, some way, they're going to be free. Somehow, some way. And you want to, like the psalmist, cry out, how long, O oh Lord, how long? Well, these old African slaves may have some medicine for us to help us along the way. In one of their songs, they said it this way. They said, sometimes I feel discouraged and think my life's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit, Pentecost weekend, <laughs> but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. They sang, oh, there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Y'all know that one. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. And then they sang, so if you cannot preach like Peter, and I'm going to see if I can get the general convention and make this the official anthem of the Episcopal Church. <laughs> if you cannot preach like Peter, and you cannot pray like Paul, you just tell the love of Jesus, how he died to save us all. Oh, there is the bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is the bomb in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Oh, we, we need some witnesses this afternoon. We need some witnesses to that kind of Christianity. We, we need some witnesses to a way of being Christian that actually looks something like Jesus. Jesus said, I will send the Holy Spirit to you the spirit of truth who will teach you everything I've been trying to teach y'all. And he said y'all, that was in the King James Version of the Bible. He <laughs> said, yeah, and then at the last, this is at the Last Supper, I love this passage, none of this is actually in the manuscript, but that's okay. Uh, but there's a passage at the Last Supper in John's Gospel, Jesus says, there are many things that I could tell you, but you can't handle them right now. Oh man, I wish I could, Mind the master's mind. So tell me some of them. <laughs> tell me. He said, but when the spirit of truth comes, the spirit will lead you into all truth. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts and praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Oh, our job is to witness. A few days before the Pentecost happened, when the fullness of the Spirit was unveiled, disclosed, like when Jesus came back, the Father came back, like the whole Trinity said, we're going to show up now. And it was like earthquake, wind, and fire. There was a group called Earth, Wind, and Fire, but that wasn't the <laughs> Trinity. 
Anyway, the Acts of the Apostles describes what happened a few days before that happened, a few days, moments before Jesus returned to the fullness of the Godhead. And the text says it this way. So when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. You will be my witnesses in first century Galilee and 21st century America. You will be my witnesses. Our job is to witness. Whether you are to be ordained a priest, we need you to help us witness. Whether you are to be confirmed today, who's getting confirmed today? Raise your hand. Let me see. Where are you? Whether you be confirmed, whether you are being received, who's being received? Let me see your hands. And who is being reaffirming their faith? Let me see your hand. Uh, you, your job is to be a witness. And for anybody, stay with me. I'm coming to a point in a minute. For anybody who has been baptized, help me somebody. Let me see who's been baptized in this room. Oh, your job, our job, is to be a witness. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But here's what I, I like about this passage. This is a little bit before Pentecost happened. And the disciples, remember, they've been with Jesus. He's been raised from the dead. Look, that doesn't happen every day. I mean, they have the TV show, The Walking Dead, but I don't want to see them. <laughs> and I don't think Jesus was a zombie either. So that, 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 No, he was raised to new life and glory and honor by the power of the love of God. They saw him. They talked to him. He had been dead, as we used to say in boxing. He was down for the count. And he was up and about within a few days. Oh, he was alive. He had seen that, and so they came to the only conclusion that actually makes sense. They said, Lord, this must be when the Lord is to restore the kingdom to Israel. This is now the time. This must be the end time. Uh, this must be the time when God is going to right all of the wrongs. This is going to be the time when God's going to make poverty history. This is going to be the time when justice will roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever flowing. This is going to be the time when we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside and study war no more. But look at what Jesus said to you. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. That's a, that's a way of saying, that ain't y'all's business. <laughs> Folk always trying to figure out when the end time is supposed to be. That's not our business. It's above our pay grade. He said, but this is your business. You will be my witnesses. That's our business. That's our job. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria in Indianapolis, in Indiana, in the United States, in the 21st century world, you will be my witnesses. And by witnessing to me and my way of love, you will help the world find life. Now, I know, and I know who I'm talking to, and ask an Episcopalian to witness, <laughs> it's a hard sell. I mean, <laughs> but let, let me see if I can make the case. It, it says in Isaiah 43 that the people of God, the Jewish people of God, it says, you will be my witnesses. You will be a light to the nation. That's in the Bible. It says in Luke 24, thus it is written that the Messiah must suffer many things and then die and repentance must, and forgiveness must be preached to all nations and you will be witnesses of these things. That's in the Bible. In John chapter 1, 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to bear witness to the light. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness. That's in the Bible. In, 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 in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will be my witness. It's all over the Bible. I'm not making this up. Even for Episcopalians. Oh, no, witnesses. But I know Episcopalians well. And I know there's at least one lawyer in the house. And, and, and Episcopalians are good. We, we're slick. Because if there's a loophole, <laughs> we will find it. And the default loophole is the Book of Common Prayer. If it's not in the prayer book, we don't have to do it. We don't have to do it. <laughs> so I did a little quick research, Bishop Jennifer. And lo and behold, in the Book of Common Prayer, page 302, after, in both baptism and confirmation, after the candidates for baptism, how many people here were baptized? Let me see the hands. Yeah, okay. Um, the candidates for baptism have promised to renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. You said you renounced them. And then he said, do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? You said, do, do you promise uh, to, 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 to live by his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? And you said you did, or if you were a baby, your godparents did it for you. Whether you liked it or not, they did it for you. And, and then, just in case you forget, we send a bishop around every couple of years, and we call that confirmation to remind you of the promises you made at baptism to renounce all that is evil and hurtful that hurts the children of God and God's creation and to turn and follow Jesus Christ and his way of love. And in confirmation, in reception and reaffirmation, you said, we're still in. And then, to make sure you get it, we then pray over you and one of the prayers is, Lord, send these people who have been baptized, send them out into the world in witness to your love. Oh, help me somebody. Oh, oh, Bishop Jennifer, there's even more than that. In the catechism, it says the ministry of laypersons. Now, let me be clear about laypersons. Layperson really doesn't mean non-clergy. Layperson means people who are baptized. I don't know why they didn't say the baptized, but anyway, because uh, it, what it really means, everybody, whether you are ordained, you could be bishop, priest, deacon, layperson. We're all lay people because we're all baptized. So the ministry of baptized persons, check this out, this is on page 855, you can check me out, <laughs> is to represent Christ and his church and to bear witness to him wherever you may be. Help me, can I get a witness this morning? Oh, can I get a witness? And then if you still didn't get it, we remind you Sunday after Sunday in the Holy Eucharist, except during COVID when you probably couldn't get Holy Eucharist, but normally when you can get to it, on page 366, and now, Father, this is before you go on out, and now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful, 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 you got it, faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Oh, our job, like they used to say about Ford Motor Company, <laughs> our job number one is to witness, to witness to this Jesus, his teaching, his manner of life, the power of his sweet, sweet spirit, to witness to this Jesus and his way of love. I've, I've come to realize how important I, that is both for us as Christians, followers of Jesus in the church, and frankly, for this world. A couple years ago, I was watching the, the Queen's 70th um, anniversary, which I, I, I'm just glad we can get a chance to rejoice. It, it, it's wonderful to see her. Um, I love the picture of her standing there as the jets of the British Air Force are going over here. And the little kid is going like this. <laughs> but it's wonderful to see a country celebrate. When I looked at it, I remembered going to England for a little wedding a few years ago. <laughs> they haven't invited me back since, but anyway. 
And, and in the sermon, I, you know, I preached about love. And, and that was a deliberate decision because love is at the heart of what Jesus is about. I mean, it, it's just clear. I mean, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it's in Matthew 22 when a lawyer, another lawyer, a uh, la lawyer comes up and says, what's the greatest law in the legal edifice of Moses? Jesus said, goes back to Moses. He quotes Deuteronomy and Leviticus. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then he adds on these two, love of God, love of neighbor. Why, yeah, love yourself. Love of God, love your neighbor. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Do you know what an extraordinary statement that is? All the law and the prophets, everything Moses was trying to teach you, everything that you find in the Hebrew scriptures, and by extension, everything you find in the New Testament, everything in the Bible is trying to show us and help us figure out how to love God and love our neighbor and love ourselves. And the truth is, it's all about love. And as Duke Ellington said, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Oh. Oh, the truth is, if it's not about love, it's not about God. And if it's about love, God is somewhere in the neighborhood. Ubi caritas, where true love is found, God himself is there. Well, I was preaching on that, and I, I, had, I had to stay still. I didn't move beyond the pulpit. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want them to take me out. I didn't. <laughs> and so I quoted Baum and Gilead. And I had checked. I mean, the manuscript had been reviewed and approved ahead of time. And I checked with the Archbishop of Canterbury. I said, do people know the spiritual Baum and Gilead? He said, church folk know it. <laughs> and I said, well, how many folk go to church in this country? But I, I, leave that. <laughs> I left that one alone. And so I was quoting to him, and I was standing at the pulpit, and, and um, I, I, I could see a security guy off to my side. And, and he, he was just kind of sitting there, you know, listening. And I said, there is a bomb in Gilead. And home team woke up just like. <laughs> and I said, a healing bomb, a good bomb, medicine, ointment to make you well. I said, this dude's about to take me out of here. And then, <laughs> but, <laughs> But the greatest shock for me was when I was traveling around soon after that. And I can't tell you how many times people came up to me on the street and on planes, on I mean, literally. And in the course of the conversation would say things like, I didn't know that Christianity and Christians are about love. About six months ago, we commissioned a study for the Episcopal Church done in cooperation with the Ipsos Group, one of the largest marketing firms in this country. And it was a survey of the American population. And when they did, and it was a sample, it was a real sample, scientific sample, of the American population, when asked about Christians and their perception, 50% use the word hypocrisy to describe Christians. 49% used the word judgmental. 46% spoke of self-righteousness. 32% used the word arrogant, so we got off on that one. And nearly 50% used the word racist to connect with Christianity. Dear family of God, we need some witnesses. We need you priests to help us witness in the world in our way that's authentic. I'm not asking Episcopalians to be what y'all ain't. I, I ain't crazy. I know better than that. No, no, no. We, we need, oh, I've got to stay COVID distance. I, I love y'all, but I got to keep my distance. <laughs> But we, we need you as priests to help the community of God through word, sacrament through our life together, to then go out into this world and witness to a way of being Christian that looks like Jesus, that looks like love. And those who are about to reaffirm their commitment to Jesus and his way of love in confirmation, reception, reaffirmation, we need you 
to go out into this world and be witnesses to the way of love that Jesus has taught us. And everybody in this room who is baptized, that's all y'all. Only the dog is going to get out of that one. <laughs> And dog might do it too. We need you all to be witnesses to the way of love, to God's way of love, which is the way of life for us all. And I know, I know it's not easy. I know it's difficult to do sometimes. And I know sometimes you get tired. But just get up and go to church. Just get up and receive some sacrament. Get up and take that Bible and Get fed. Get up and go to a prayer. Do something. Do something. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. But anyway, you know what? I mean? Actually, that was what Joe Biden said the other day. Do something. <laughs> Do something that feeds your soul. And then go out and feed the world. We need you. This country needs you. This world needs you. Our church needs you. We need some witnesses. And when you get dispirited, just remember the wisdom of those old slaves. There is a God. And this God is real. And though we can't see him, we know this God is real. And just trust him. And I know that sounds easier said than done, but, but it may be easier than you think. When I was bishop of North Carolina, I used to get up, you know, sometimes go to the office, but I lived in cars. I think Bishop Jennifer knows exactly what I'm talking about. You, you live in a car. I was wearing cars out at, to the point that the finance people said, what are you doing to these cars? I said, well, I'm on the Indianapolis Speedway, Indianapolis 500. I'm just working, working. Actually, I did get stopped by a, a law enforcement officer, and I said, officer, I'm sorry, I was on my way to a funeral, and he said, that, that's okay, Reverend, we just don't want you to have to go to your own. I said, huh? Oh. I said, oh, you're very cute. Thank you for that. <laughs> but I used to put miles on cars. Now I get frequent flyer miles. I get on airplanes. And I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, which means if I'm going to go anywhere in the continental U.S., I'm probably flying from Raleigh to Atlanta. The old saying is, uh, you may be going to heaven, you may be going to hell, but if you're on Delta Airlines, you're going through Atlanta first. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I'm always on Delta, I, enough that I actually know some of the flight attendants on some of their routes. Um, it's, really, it's really quite tragic, but anyway, that's the way it is. And so I get on the plane and I have a routine and, and I'm used to it now. I, you know, I always speak to the flight attendants, I got my mask on and nod to them. So I want them to know I'm a good passenger, y'all. You're not gonna have to have air marshals taking me down. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm good. Anyway, I sit down and get in my seat and you know, put my seat belt on and um, you know, put my bags underneath and take out my iPad. I got the Bible on the pad. I go right to the Bible and just kind of read a few passages, just, just in case. Um, anyway, <laughs> and then I kind of sit there and I wait for the flight attendants, you know, they, once they get everybody on board, then they stand up and they, they do their thing. Um, I would ask all, uh, all passengers to please take your seats, um, have your trays in their upright and locked position, um, uh, seat belts fashion, um, and they say, in the unlikely event of an in a mid-air emergency, oxygen masks will descend. I love that descend. It's like the Lord will descend from heaven. <laughs> Oxygen mass will descend from the ceiling. Place yours on first and assist your neighbor with theirs after yours is on. Um, also, uh, in the unlike, I love that, unlikely event of an emergency, in this unlikely event of emergency, which we're mentioning for the second time, um, there are lights on the floor and you'll find them um, at the exits. There's exits at the front, exit above the wings, and exits around the back. Uh, and they go on through this, and then when they finish, uh, then the pilot comes on, and they all have that Air Force voice. Hey, folks, we want to welcome you all aboard Delta Airlines. <laughs> uh, we expect to have a good flight on our way to wherever it is we're going, uh, but we, we may run into a little chop on the climb out. I love how they talk about a little chop on the climb out. 
there may be a little weather about two-thirds of the way in our flight, but we'll find a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet, and we're going to try to make it as comfortable for y'all as, as we can. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight on Delta Airlines. So you get on airlines, and then the plane, you know how it is? It takes off. It goes down the runway. You know how it is? I mean, it goes down, the, and there are all those noises and stuff going on, and it's making all those noises, and the plane's making noises. They got the flaps in position so they can take off so that, the, you know, so you can defy Sir Isaac Newton, and they keep going down, and it goes down the runway and picks up speed, and eventually, slowly but surely, that plane begins to take off, and you can actually feel it defying gravity, and it's just an incredible thing, and it takes off, and I hate it when they bank before they get all the way up. But anyway, sometimes they just bank to make that turn. You say, do y'all know what you're doing? And you anyway, you finally get up to 35,000 feet. They take off the seatbelt sign. And you can find, at my age, you finally can go to the bathroom. I mean, that's it. <laughs> and all of that has happened. And I got here via Delta Airlines through Atlanta. And I never saw the pilot. I got on a plane. I didn't know who was flying that plane. I didn't know that pilot get a C in pilot school or an A, right? I didn't know was that pilot an honor student or did he or she get out by the skin of their teeth? I didn't know anything about the pilot. I didn't know what they were doing the night before. You know, were they drinking and weren't supposed to be drinking? I mean, what was going on? I, I didn't ask any of those questions. I just trusted Delta Airlines. And then on top of that, I didn't know who the mechanics were, who inspected the plane. Did they actually inspect the plane? Did they really do it or did they just put it on paper that they had done it? I didn't know answers to any of those questions because I trust Delta Airlines. And I finally realized if I can trust Delta Airlines, who I have not seen, I can trust Lord God Almighty, who I have. Oh. Oh. We can do this thing. Oh, if you cannot preach to Peter. Whoa. <laughs> I guess that was the heavenly chorus said. <laughs> if you cannot preach like Peter, and you cannot pray like Paul, you just tell the love of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. How he died to save us all. Yeah. There is a bond. In Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bond in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. God love. <laughs> we'll continue at the bottom of page 11 with the renewal of our baptismal covenant. Dear family of God, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, Do 
Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? Whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray for these persons who have presented themselves to renew their commitment to Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Bend, O Lord, your servant Dustin, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Sarah with your Holy Spirit, empower her for your service, and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. 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 And, O oh Lord, your servant, Tanya, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant, Elizabeth, with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. 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 Then your servant, Christian, O oh Lord, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant, Raphael, with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Bend, O oh Lord, your servant Ryan with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant William with your Holy Spirit, empower him for your service, and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Mary, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, 
bless and keep you always. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Ethan with your Holy Spirit, and empower him for your service, and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Valerie, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Gabriel with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Andrew, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Colton with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Send this, O Lord, your servant Bethel with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Karen, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Millicent, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. 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 Richard, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Honor, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Stephen, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Justin, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Matthew with your heavenly spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Send, O Lord, this your servant Jessica with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Laura, Lauren, with your heavenly Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Send this your servant, Rosemary, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Jackie, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Defend this, thy servant, O Lord, down with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Amanda with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Defend this, your servant Kathleen, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more 
until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Jody, we recognize you as a member of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, <laughs> Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Bend, O oh Lord, your servant Joseph with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Wendy, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Alan, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers, the church is the, is the family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord and to share in the renewing of his world. Now you are called to work as a pastor, priest, and teacher together with your bishop and fellow presbyters and to take your share in the councils of the church. As a priest, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ and to fashion your life in accordance with its precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, to declare God's forgiveness to penitent sinners, to pronounce God's blessing, to share in the administration of holy baptism, and in the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood, and to perform the other ministrations entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. My brothers, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to this priesthood? I believe I am so called. Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be diligent in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures and in seeking the knowledge of such things as may make you a stronger and more able minister of Christ? I will. Will you endeavor so to minister the word of God and the sacraments of the new covenant that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received? I will. Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the family of God? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. Will you persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking God's grace both for yourselves and for others, offering all your labors to God through the mediation of Jesus Christ and in the sanctification of the Holy Spirit? I will. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things 
give you the grace and power to perform them. God and Father of all, we praise you for your infinite love in calling us to be a holy people in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus our Lord, who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many brethren and the head of the church. We thank you that by his death he has overcome death and having ascended into heaven has poured his gifts abundantly upon your people making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry and the building up of his body. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Jason. Fill him with grace and power and make him a priest in your church. May he exalt you, O Lord, in the midst of your people, offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Make him a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things he may serve without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Joel. Fill him with grace and power and make him a priest in your church. May he exalt you, O Lord, in the midst of your people. Offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. Boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Make him a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things he may serve without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. May it please you, O Lord, to consecrate and sanctify these hands by this anointing and my blessing. Amen. That whatever they bless may be blessed, and whatever they consecrate may be consecrated in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May it please you, O Lord, to consecrate and sanctify these hands by this anointing and my blessing. Amen. That whatever they bless may be blessed, and whatever they consecrate may be consecrated in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jason, Joel, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority given you to preach the word of God and to administer his holy sacraments. Do not forget the trust committed to you as a priest of the church of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Whatever way you find comfortable, please exchange the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you.
Please be seated. What a glorious day. What a glorious day. Now, the presiding bishop always brings a word, always, but today, Holy Spirit was working. So thank you so much. Above and beyond. Above and beyond. A little inside of baseball, one of the things that we had been working with in the Diocese of Indianapolis is like how to encapsulate in a catchy phrase what we're about. And so some of you will remember, we spent months going over the term bold witness. Could we actually say bold witness? Remember we would hashtag bold witness, radical welcome, sometimes we still do that because that's who we want to be, that's who God is calling us to be. So witnessing was the message we needed to hear for sure today. I'm not going to talk long. We have a lot of great things going on today in addition to this amazing worship service and the Holy Spirit moving through this space. The Holy Spirit's everywhere. It's going to be outside, too. So I want to remind us that we have a festival. The Love is the Way Festival will commence after we finish our worship service here. Before we get to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, though, I want to just give a couple of reminders. One is that we will have communion stations offered up front here. All of the bread that will be offered on the floor here will be gluten-free. So you should have no, um, if you have gluten intolerances, you'll be fine in that front. If you would like to come forward to receive a blessing, please do. You cross your arms across your chest like that to signify that you would like a blessing. We'll receive bread and wine today, and we ask that if you would like to take the wine that you help the chalices guide the cup to your lips so that you might receive that way. A word about the offertory. Today's a big day. <laughs> it's a big day, and we hope that you are feeling the Holy Spirit move to be generous in offering a little bit of your life and labor to the Lord. And so we've got two ways to do that. The offertory today will be given three different ways. It'll be split between the two priests as part of their discretionary funds so that they can be able to respond to emergency needs and needs that arise in the course of their pastoral ministries. But it will also be split in order to give a portion of the offering to the presiding bishop's bishop's appeal because there are incredible efforts and needs that come up in the life of a presiding bishop in our church, across the church, and it would be wonderful if you were able to support the work of your ministry on behalf of us all across the church. And so please be as generous as you are able. There are two ways to do this. If you are an electronic person, you can text, you can text to this number, 73256. Just type in INDIO, I-N-D-Y-D-I-O, to the number 73256. So INDIO is the easy part, right? That's who we are but you want to text those words, IndyDio, to 73256. Or you can just go to our IndyDio.org website to the donate page. It'll be really easy and to find like where to give. It's just one option today. Or there are golden buckets. <laughs> we did not plan this, y'all, but there are actual golden buckets behind you. They're being held up. And if you happen to have cash, coins, I know the presiding bishop doesn't like to hear a jingle, but if you have whatever you'd like to put in the, 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 bus, the basket, the um, buckets, please do. They'll be available at the end of the service, and at any point you may able, be able to make your gift, and then the ushers will take care to make sure that the offering is safe and taken to its place. And all of that, know that you are most heartily welcome here, and God loves you. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
We offer this Holy Eucharist to the greater glory of Almighty God, praying God's particular and special blessing on all the bishop, clergy, and people of the Diocese of Indianapolis, praying God's blessing not only on this diocese, but on the entire Episcopal Church, Anglican communion, Christians, whoever they are, people of all faiths and goodwill. Indeed, we offer this Holy Eucharist, praying God's blessing on the entire human family and all of God's creation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our, Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children, through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, 
and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God, we are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Before we have our post-communion prayer, it is especially fitting to say a word of deep gratitude, hallelujah, and thanks to the Christian Mass Community Choir, oh, yeah. Rodney Bryan, directing. <laughs> our Diocesan Celebration Choir, led by Christopher Caruso Lynch. <laughs> and the inimitable Marilyn Kaiser on the organ as she retires this year after decades of ministry in music. Thank you, Marilyn, on behalf of the Episcopal Church. On page 22, together let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the Holy Spirit body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Jason and Joel may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in the holiness of life. Grant that 
be with them. May they serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now go forth into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. The blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be on you and remain with you in this world in which we live this day and forevermore. Amen. Salgamos con gozo al mundo en el poder del Espíritu. Aleluya, aleluya. Demos gracias a Dios. Aleluya, aleluya. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Aleluya, aleluya. Thanks be to God. Aleluya, aleluya.